waiting to give Senator Madigan the call. Senator Madigan. Thank you, Mr. President. My question is to the Assistant Treasurer, Senator Sinodinus. In December last year, yeah. Senator, you announced reforms. Order. Order. Senator Madigan is entitled to be heard in silence. Senator, Senator Madigan. In December last year, you announced reforms to the future of financial advice legislation. It was asserted that the previous government's reforms went too far, creating unnecessary complexity, imposing significant burdens on industry and reducing the availability, increasing the cost of advice to consumers. Can the minister outline how amending the existing grandfathering precision? provisions to ensure that advisers can move between licensees whilst continuing to access grandfathered benefits will assist their current climate clients to receive the best return on their in financial investment. The Assistant Treasurer, Senator Sinodinus. Thank you, Mr President. I thank Senator Madigan for his question, of which I did have some notice. Um, and Senator Madigan, for the, for the benefit of the Senate, Senator Madigan is referring to the future financial advice reforms to which uh, this government is to introduce amendments in the near future. I announced those amendments before Christmas. Part of those amendments were to do with what are called the grandfathering provisions in related to conflicted remuneration. This is in relation to commissions and other such payments where there is a potential conflict of interest between the interests of the adviser and the interests of uh, the person receiving the advice. <coughs> Under the current legislation, advisor movements have been reduced. They would effectively been frozen in the market because existing conflicted remuneration had been grandfathered. So advisers thought by moving to work for someone else or to set up their own business, they would lose that trail of commissions. What we have done is to say that that will not happen. We will remove that particular provision. But this will not disadvantage consumers because, in due course, as the financial circumstances of investors change, under what is known as the best interest duty, the adviser must put the interests of the investor first and change their advice, which means they may put the uh, investor on a new financial platform or provide a new service. In that case, the commission ends and then they are on a pure fee-for-service arrangement. So, so, in relation Order. to what Senator Madigan is asking, what we are doing is seeking to promote mobility within the industry because there had been feedback ever since the, government, the previous government's reforms that mobility was, was being frozen within the industry and there was indeed a potential shortage of advisers starting to Order. occur. Time has expired. <coughs> Senator Madigan. Thank you, Mr. President. Can the minister outline how the $190 million, $190 million saving to industry through this legislation is considered to be reasonable compared to the billions of dollars super members and consumers of financial products will have to continue to pay through commissions through the relaxation of the current laws? Minister. M Mr. President, we are not relaxing consumer protections. What we are doing is removing some unnecessary red tape and costs. The industry itself had indicated that the costs of complying with the previous government's FOFA reforms would be in the vicinity of something like $375 million and an ongoing cost of $300 million. These costs are not a free lunch. Regulation is not a free lunch. Those costs would have been passed on to consumers. The impact of that would have been to actually redu reduce the availability and affordability of financial advice. Through our changes, we are reducing those costs of implementation by around $90 million a year and, on an ongoing basis, reducing compliance costs by around $190 million a year. And that will actually promote the affordability and accessibility to financial advice. There is no point in having roll gold laws which actually make it harder for people to get the financial advice that they need. Senator Madigan. Thank you, Mr. President. Can the minister commit to not introducing any regulations relating to the future of financial advice legislation within the next six months, but rather allow the Senate to debate its merits through standard legislative processes? 
Minister. M Mr President, in the next month or so, the Senate will have before it the full panoply of regulations and legislation surrounding our amendments to the future financial advice reforms. We are going the way of regulation initially in order to provide certainty quickly to industry, but that will be backed up by legislation, which will mean that Senator Wong, it will mean that we will have an opportunity in this place to fully debate the legislation. Everybody will be consulted. There's been extensive consultation already. We are prepared to tweak the amendments in response to representations we receive, depending on the nature of those representations. Uh, I can assure Senator Madigan, in no way will the Senate be disrespected in this process.